Hey everybody, this is Jason Akers with Green Acres Pest Control. Uh, started a new series for the month of November called Mouse Monday. Basically what we're going to go over are different ways that you can combat mice coming in on the winter time. I know a lot of people are worried about it. It's something that does happen uh, just about every year in the winter. Um, and I have written a very detailed article on my website at greenacrespc.com. It's uh, A-K-E-R-S, how you spell my last name. And you can go on there and you can read it. I'll link it in the description below and I'll put a link on each one of my videos too so you know where to go to find this information. But uh, basically, the reason that mice come in in the winter is because they're hungry. Uh, you know, in Virginia, which, by the way, I'm local to Charlottesville and Lynchburg, Virginia. But in Virginia, you find that, uh, you know, the mice come in the home really year-round, uh, mostly in the summer and in the winter. And a lot of people would hear that and they think, but uh, summertime, why would they even want to come in in summertime? Everything's nice. It's hot. The, the mice like to be outside when it's warm. Um but the, the real reason is Virginia goes through these cycles of, uh, you know, really good rainfall and then drought. We'll have three or four weeks of drought a lot of times in the summer. And when the grass dies back in the summertime, the, the, you know, it's not going to seed anymore. And so the mice get hungry and they want to eat. And so what they'll do is they'll start coming in the house trying to find something to eat. And yes, it does get hot. They don't like the heat. Just like, you know, if it gets hot around and, you know, outside your house, you want to go inside where it's cool. And so they will come in your house in the summer. And I've seen them coming in the house in the summer just as bad as the wintertime. Uh, in the winter, they like to come in because, well, they can hibernate just like bears and, you know, other animals hibernate through the winter uh, if it gets cold enough. But Virginia doesn't really have a a hibernative mouse really at all because our temperatures don't get cold and stay cold. You go up further up into like New York, uh, Maine, you know, Vermont, up in areas where it's really, really cold, you'll find that bears and mice and things like that really do hibernate through the winter and they go through a true state of hibernation where they actually stay asleep. But in Virginia, they might enter a state of hibernation for two or three days and then it jumps up to 60, 70, 80 degrees. Even in January, sometimes you'll get 80 degree weather and the mice just wake up like it's spring and it's time to come in the house again. So uh, what we're gonna talk about today is we're gonna talk about mouse traps and why mice don't go into traps. Why people, people have asked me, they'll say, well, you know, I've tried everything. I bait for them, I trap them, I've been trapping them for years, and then for some reason they won't go in the trap this year, I can't figure out why they're not working. And so today I'm gonna hopefully help you uh, and explain to you why trapping mice is just not a good idea. It's not very effective. I mean, you can kill mice with traps, don't get me wrong, they do work, that's why they're sold, that's why they've been sold for years, because if they didn't work, people wouldn't buy them. But they don't work as well as they should. I'm going to explain to you why. Now, I've got a mouse trap here. This is a, Vic, uh, a Victor. This is what most people find at, you know, Walmart or anywhere like that. And it's pretty filthy. It's been through a lot. It's obviously been used an awful lot. This is an old one. I've never used this one. It was in the house that, that we live in when we moved here. But it's rusty. It's old. It's probably killed a few mice. And just so you notice, I am wearing gloves. I always wear gloves when I mess with mice tra mouse traps. Uh, mouse urine and feces carry all kinds of really toxic bacteria and diseases. You do not want to mess with a used mouse trap without gloves. You've got to wear gloves. I can't stress this enough or how many people I've seen just go and reach down, oh, there's a mouse trap, and pick it up and fondle it with their hands and the thing's filthy. It's, got, it's covered in urine, uh, blood, guts, you know, you gotta realize this this breaks mouse. You know, they bleed all over these things and they get disgusting and you don't wanna touch them without your gloves on. But anyway, uh, like I was explaining to you, um, we'll pretend this is new and I'll explain to you why. Now, you wanna buy new mouse traps every year. You don't wanna use the same traps year after year. The reason that is, is because mice urinate on the trap. They 
if, all right, let's say you come along, you're a mouse. You come along the baseboard, you find a mouse trap there, and a dead mouse is in it, and it scares you, because now you've found a dead mouse in a trap. So you pee on the trap, which is what mice do. They urinate all over the trap. That will scare new mice from coming along and messing with the trap. Even though you've taken the trap, you've cleaned the trap, there's no more mouse on it, the smell of the urine is in the wood. These things are made of wood, and so it soaks into the wood, and even in plastics. Plastics absorb those kind of smells too, even your plastic traps and stuff. And so, uh, you know, you don't want to use the same traps year in and year out. They're not very expensive. You know, if you're really gonna use traps to kill mice, then you wanna go with something that's uh, you know, you, they're inexpensive. Just buy them every year. Buy new traps. They're cheap. So, and rat traps too. Rat traps and mouse traps, they're both pretty cheap. And so you, you're better off just buying new traps every year. But so anyway, one of the things I've noticed, now, now I have caught mice on traps. I don't really trap them anymore. Baiting is just way more effective. And I'll go into that next week on how to bait for mice. But uh, when it comes to trapping mice, one of the biggest problems that people use is they bait them with cheese because they've watched Tom and Jerry and they think that that's what mice eat. Mice like cheese, don't get me wrong, but it's oily, it's slippery. They can bait, they can pull it out of the trap and not trigger the trap. Don't wanna use cheese. You wanna use something like peanut butter, something really sticky. Peanut butter is really the best. You wanna use creamy peanut butter, uh, now, I was going to come up here and bait this trap, but I don't want to get my... I'm not going to use this. I'm going to throw this away after this video because this is disgusting and I would never use this. But um, I'm going to explain to you. I'm going to get up real close to the camera here. Let me see if I can scoot your chair back. Now, there's a little bucket right here in the trap. That's where you want to put the peanut butter. You don't want to put it all over here. You don't want to put it anywhere on this board because it's just going to get messy it's, and it'll waste good peanut butter. And you just put it down in this little bucket right here. That's the only spot. You pull your trap up. Now, I'm just going to show you how to set these. Pull the trap up. And if I can get it to... And this goes in that little... There. So, that way you don't mess with the trapping mechanism at all. You just put a little bit of peanut butter in that little bitty hole. Not around the, you know, the trap or the trigger or anything like that. Don't put it in there. Put in this little bucket right here. And that's gonna work the best. Doesn't take much, just a little bit. Just enough for the mouse to dig his ho nose down in there to try to get it out. And when he does, well, I'm not gonna trigger this trap and I don't have anything to trigger. I actually, I do. It does it to me every time. Anyway, all right. So anyway, that's how you bait a trap. That's how you set a trap. Now the place you wanna put the trap, and if I can get my camera woman, to move right here, we'll do it right here up next to the wall. Well, we'll do it right here. We'll do it right here on these little boards we got kind of set up here. Now you treat, you, you set, we're gonna pretend this is set because I honestly don't wanna snap my finger. But you set it, you put it right up against the wall, just like that. Mice run along the baseboards. They'll go up over the trap and keep running. So it will trigger them really well that way. Even if they don't notice the bait there, a lot of times they'll walk over top of it, and when it does, they'll ca it'll catch them right underneath this bar or right underneath this bar. It's really common to find them halfway in and out of the trap when they get caught in a trap. So you want to just keep that in mind. You have to put it there. Don't lay it like this. Don't lay it like that. It needs to stick just like that. So put it like under a couch, somewhere up against the wall where you know children or pets or anything aren't going to come in contact because it sticks quite a bit away away from the wall. But that's where you want to bait for it. That's the spot you want to put it at. So, uh, anyway, so now you know how to set a trap. You know how to lay a trap. Uh, if you're going to use traps, just understand that it's not fail-proof. It mice. You have to be proactive. You have to. Uh, if you hear a trap go off, you need to get up and check the trap immediately. Mice run together a lot of times. And so you don't want another mouse to come along and see a dead mouse in the trap. That In this industry, that's called trap shy. They'll get trap shy when they come along and they find another mouse dead in the trap. They know it's gonna kill them. They're gonna stay away from it. 
it, they will not work after a mouse comes along and finds another mouse dead in a trap. So keep that in mind. You want to make sure you check your traps and check them often, once a day, sometimes twice a day. Uh, if you have a really heavy infestation, you want to check them pretty regularly, especially during active hours, like around dinner time and around breakfast time. When you hear them running, you'll hear them scurrying around. So you want to check them those times, and that way you know that either a mouse is in it or a mouse is not in the trap. Um, and that, that, I guess that'll just do it for today. If you want, you can check me out on Facebook, Green Acres Pest Control, LLC. And like I said, I did write an article on mice that I put on my website. It's been maybe about a couple years ago. It's pretty in-depth on, you know, the diseases they carry. A lot of people uh, think that, the, you know, mice and rats and stuff only carry like the bubonic plague and things, but they carry a lot of different diseases. And so it's a very interesting article. I'd highly recommend you go and read that. It get, you know, be educated on the subject so you understand the dangers of mice in the house. And, uh... Like the video if you if you enjoyed watching it, give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. If you really liked it, think of subscribing to my channel. I give information like this, uh, you know, two, three times a week. I have videos uploaded. And like I said, every Monday I'm going to do a new mouse video and explain to you even more. Next Monday we're going to talk about baiting from mice. And I'm going to explain to you some different forms of bait stations and different baits and stuff you can use and what works the best. So y'all can look forward to that. Like I said, subscribe so you get these notifications in your bar and you know when I'm up here doing videos. Y'all have a great day. I really appreciate it.